So uh, we were on air last Thursday, it was, uh, when it emerged that uh, Reform UK uh, had overtaken uh, the Tories, at least in one poll, a YouGov poll for The Telegraph. I think there's at least one other poll that suggests the same thing now. Reform are certainly on the march, and at least in one poll, they're ahead of the Tories. Now, if they continue uh, to perform like that, if they continue to be ahead of the Tories numerically, uh, in terms of TV debates between leaders, various candidates, uh, the BBC has already calculated who debates with who. Uh, they've always calculated this on the basis of popularity, on the basis of polls where the parties are standing. So you've had Starmer versus Sunak. Well, Nigel Farage is now saying we're the second party. I should be uh, at least debating uh, Keir Starmer, if not Rishi Sunak, but certainly... Uh, he says that he deserves the chance one-on-one -on -one to debate with Keir Starmer, something I would uh, contend Keir Starmer wouldn't be that keen on because Mr Farage is quite sharp on his feet. Uh, he's quite a good talker. Uh, Keir Starmer, in stark contrast, is not. Uh, let's talk to the political correspondent at The Spectator, James Hill. Hi, James. Hi, Kevin. Uh, now, uh, I'd love to see this uh, Starmer versus Farage on te telly. I mean, Farage is coming up with some quite logical points. So the BBC apparently does not limit itself to uh, the criterion that you must be leader of the Tories or the Labour in order to warrant being in a one on one political debate. It's to do with popularity. They monitor the polls. Now, if they're monitoring the polls now, they might notice that reform are starting to be ahead of the Tories in some of these polls. So Farage demanding to be involved in a leaders debate with at least Starmer, uh, that uh, holds some water, doesn't it? He's got a point. Yeah, certainly. I think there's an argument for that, not least because there's another poll out tonight, Kevin, which shows that reform and the Conservatives are neck and neck, according to Redfield and Wilton, I think, on 18 points each. So this isn't just a one off poll. This is a second poll that's shown that the two are equal. And of course, that will then strengthen these arguments, suggesting that, hang on a sec, you know, whether they're second or third, they're still ahead of the Lib Dems. And why do the Lib Dems get a seat at the table when, of course, they're not going to be competing anywhere near this? I think they're only about 12, 13 percent in the polls. Uh, indeed. And uh, I mean, should this become a reality? The BBC uh, have said uh, it's certainly on the table. It's certainly up for consideration. Uh, should this become a reality? Uh, in reality, what do you think will happen? My guess is that uh, Mr Starmer, or Sir Keir, as I should call him, uh, might duck and dive on this one, try to avoid this showdown. What would you think, James? Yeah, I agree. I think in terms of a head-to-head -head Starmer Farage, I think there's uh, two reasons to suggest it won't go ahead. One of which is that I think Starmer's strategy of the whole thing has been to uh, suggest that reform is really just about splitting the Tory vote, splitting the right-wing vote. And you saw this today when uh, he was asked about uh, Farage um, in his speech this morning and uh, Keir Starmer just sort of brushed it off and suggested it was just noise and that this whole election was between uh, Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak's Prime Minister. So brushing it aside and basically, you know, you know not intruding on private groups and that's how Labour are regarding it. The second thing, of course, is that, you know, Nigel Farage has a track record of winning over Labour votes. You look at 2015, UKIP took about half its vote from the Tories and half its vote from Labour. So I think Rishi, I think Keir Starmer and a lot of the people who remember 2019 and how devastating that Brexit coalition was are very, very aware of the effect of Nigel Farage's rhetoric and why not they want to give him an opening. So I think they're happy to let it play out between the right, the second and third Tories and reform battling it out for that. And uh, meanwhile, just bank the gains across the rest of England. And do you put any store by all this talk of a possible uh, uniting of the right, you know, Farage and uh, Rishi or whoever somehow making some kind of a deal to have a, a new coalition of the right uh, to stand up to what uh, could be a massive Labour majority at the, at the election? Um, do you put any store by the fact that both Reform and the Tories might be prepared to work together? Because I'm not uh, sensing very much of that from the mood music coming out from Nigel and David Cameron today in particular. Yes, I mean, the problem with this whole 
movement is that you know half the Tories have been fighting Farage and Farage has been fighting them for 10 20 years so you know they're two rival parties and ultimately if you want to unite the right you have to agree on what the right should be and the fact is you know the Tories and reform are presenting very different views on this you know the European Court of Human Rights take that reform uh, wants to pull out immediately the Conservative official position in their manifesto is uh, renegotiate and look at reforming you know if there's a way of changing the existing system there's a very different positions now there's some people on the Tory right to agree with Farage but the fact is the mainstream isn't there yet. So I think that, you know, we're not going to see any kind of deal, not least, of course, because reforms voters are a bit unlike 2019. In 2019, there's a lot of Brexit party voters who were happy when Boris Johnson, you know, was elected prime minister. They quite liked him. They had a positive view of him. This time, reforms view, if you look at polls, is overwhelmingly hostile to Rishi Sunak. So it's a very different party. The situation is very different. And of course, 2019, we had Brexit. We had a principle to fight for. Uh, there was Jeremy Corbyn to battle against. This time, no one's really scared of Keir Starmer. And I can't see what kind of, you know, great principle would encourage Farage to do a deal. There's nothing he wants that Rishi Sunak can give. And uh, he's very much enjoying making hay and potentially challenging the Tories for their votes. Yes, he's having the time of his life. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I read actually in your excellent publication today uh, that uh, this is just me reporting what was reported, uh, that there's some disquiet at Tory HQ. And the question being asked at the moment is, whose idea was it to put David Cameron out there to lead the charge against Farage? Uh, or indeed, was it nobody's idea apart from David Cameron's? Does he have ambitions? Do the Tories really think David Cameron's the man to lead the charge? Because I don't think he is. Uh, what's going on there, uh, James? Well, he had this interview with The Times in which he sort of suggested that there was, uh, you know, you know, some of the rhetoric was a bit like Enoch you know, Powell's. And then, of course, he shirked away from the comparison. So, I mean, that's immediately quite a sort of big... Uh, suggestion insinuation to float. I think the problem is, is that he's the wrong messenger for this. You know, I remember the day David Cameron was appointed foreign secretary. A uh, one uh, Tory MP, a Eurosceptic, said to me, "Look, you know, we've just appointed the guy who lost the referendum. You know, what does that mean for my Leave voting constituents?" And I think the danger is every time David Cameron pops up, it casts a very different. Uh, aspersion on all these other arguments and so i think that he's the wrong argument. I think also he's making the wrong argument which is that he's saying you know Nigel Farage wants to destroy the tories yes he does and you know he's entitled to do that he's a rival politician he has every right to if he wishes to do so so that is a very weak argument i would say and i think he's the wrong person to making that message that's exactly what i said earlier james you know the, the cameron gomer said he's trying to destroy the tory party Ah, the penny's finally dropped, Dave. Yeah, he is. You know, that's because he's not the same party as you. Uh, it's an extraordinary situation, but you and I will be glued to the screen should uh, that uh, Farage Starmer showdown ever happen. Uh, we'll watch that like a hawk. Uh, great to talk to you, James, as always. Thank you very much. James Hill, political correspondent.